Buying a house is likely one of the biggest investments you'll ever make. And if you are new to an area or have never been before or bought a home before, a process like this can be very daunting. Heck, even if you've bought and sold several houses before, each time you go through it, it's very stressful and it can feel like the first time all over again. Looking back, there are so many things I wish I would have considered before buying my house, like details about the septic tank, knowing more about termites, and more. Hi, I'm Sarah Mislowski with Key Point Homes Group, a real estate team here in the Northeast Metro Atlanta area, and our goal is to make buying and selling real estate as easy and seamless as possible. If I had a time machine, I wish someone could have gone back and told these things to me before I bought a home, and especially my home here in Georgia. And you have to know that when we bought our house seven years ago, I wasn't even in the real estate business then. I was a teacher. The first thing I wish I would have considered is considering the resale factor. So why would you do this? You haven't even bought the house yet, and yet you want me to think about selling it? Well, yes. Unless you're moving into a 55 plus community or getting ready to retire, whatever home you buy now is most likely not gonna be the home you stay in for the rest of your life. Of course, our goal is to help you find one that you can envision living in for a really long time. But odds are you will one day need a home with more space or one with less space. This means that you are going to have to sell this home one day. Perhaps you didn't mind that your current home doesn't have a backyard or bumps right up against a retaining wall, but one day down the line, potential buyers with kids and dogs are going to wish they had that outdoor space and they are likely going to skip out on buying your home. Or, you know, maybe you may not care that the neighborhood you're moving into sits right on top of a busy highway, but that could be the thing that keeps a future buyer from viewing your home whenever they go to house shop. Along those same lines is you have to remember that not every home improvement project you do will bring the same return on investment as what you put into it. For example, spending $75,000 on a huge pool and hot tub is not necessarily going to add that $75,000 of value to your home. Now, an updated kitchen or bathroom can add value to your home, but you're not always gonna make dollar per dollar investment back in what you spend, especially if you're going top of the line appliances, but the neighborhood you live in just has more traditional middle of the line appliances. This is something that you're going to want to keep in mind as you are making updates. Or if you decide to remodel your home and choose to paint everything orange and add a really specialized carpet to achieve that 60s look, what's that called? Shag carpet? Yes. That is going to cost you whenever you go to sell your house. Of course, you want your home to look and feel a certain way while you're living in it. So at the end of the day, if it's worth it to you to spend, you know, X amount of dollars of money on updates to have your perfect home, go for it. Just know that it may not pay off for itself uh, whenever you go to list your house to resell it. Now, by the same token, when buying a slightly older or outdated home, think about what changes could be made to that house at some point to boost the value. So, you know, we all know this from watching home shows on HGTV. Simple fixes like new flooring or fresh paint, that can go a really long way. Now, with that being said, and I'm talking to myself here, know your tolerance and your ability to follow through with those plans. So we bought uh, our house here six years ago. It's a beautiful 60s ranch and it was almost the original 60s decor everything. And, you know, as we were buying it, we were thinking, yeah, no problem. We're gonna update the kitchen, we'll update the bathrooms, rip out this carpet, refinish the floors, new paint, all of that great stuff and all those wonderful ideas that you have for the house. And if you are great on executing on plans like that, more power to you. What I have realized now, six years later, is that we executed on some of those plans, but a lot of them, we are still living with the original finishes in this house. And so maybe in hindsight, if I could go back and think about things differently, I may have spent more money or maybe sought out a home that was a little bit more renovated because obviously we are not the type of people that are good with following through on those types of plans. So know you and your capabilities and what you can do and maybe go ahead and think about spending that extra time to get the house that you really want or not have to live through the headaches of the renovation. The overarching theme here is that you have to consider that you are not the last person to own this home one day when your family has grown or your kids have moved out, you're going to have to sell. And of course, 
you're going to want to gain the equity of this investment. Now, another thing I wish I would have considered while searching for my home is that age and size does matter, at least in real estate. The age of the house isn't necessarily the biggest concern unless all the systems are also original. A 20 year old house with a new roof or a new HVAC system or a new hot water heater would be better in my opinion than a 15 year old house with all original systems. When these systems reach the end of their life, they're going to need to be repaired or replaced. Now that's certainly not the end of the world, but it is also not gonna be cheap. So that is something to keep in mind. There are ways we can help protect you when you're buying like a home warranty, which will definitely help lower your out-of-pocket cost on some of these items for repair or replacement. Now, when it comes to the size of a house, this is something that we find buyers will waffle back and forth on and ultimately skip out on really great houses because they are worried too much about the size of guest spaces or entertaining areas. Oftentimes people will not move forward on a house that ticks every single box on their list because they think the guest bathroom will be too far away from the guest bedroom or that the bedroom isn't quite large enough. Now, obviously if you have someone who will permanently be living uh, in that space that could be a very big deal but if you're worried about the size of a bedroom that your cousin is going to stay in for two weekends out of the year don't let that fact override the fact that everything else on that list is perfect for you and your family's everyday life. Now, another thing that you need to consider is that while there are a lot of new construction developments all throughout the Metro Atlanta area and the places that we serve, majority of the houses that you are going to find are going to be resale homes. Don't rule out on these homes or limit yourself to a narrow window of build time. So sometimes we'll get uh, buyers that will reach out to us and say, hey, we only want to buy a house that's been built within the last five years. Well, some of the best houses were built 15 to 20 years ago in some of these great areas. You have people that have done great renovations where you're buying a house practically already renovated that is going to give you more square footage, more yard space, more everything than what some of these new construction homes uh, in that same price point you will find. So don't limit yourself too much. Now, something else that you need to know about your new Georgia home is that most of the home on larger lots or around Lake Lanier are going to be on a septic tank. And so this is something that I found out in the process of searching for our house. Now, this is probably drastically different from where you may be re relocating from. And while there are many homes that are on sewer, think, you know, like new construction homes, small lot neighborhoods or homes, you know, right smack dab in the middle of town, majority of those are going to be sewer. But majority of everything else, especially if it's a half acre lot or larger, those are going to be on a septic system. So what does this mean for you? It, does it stink? Ha, huh, get it? Okay. Um, well, it means that you are going to want to do a few extra things during due diligence, like ensuring the size of the septic tank. So you want to make sure um, that the septic tank is the right size for the house, for the amount of people that are going to be living there. That's the one thing that you're going to want to do. And uh, during that due diligence time period, you are going to want to make sure that the septic tank has been recently inspected and pumped. If it has not been inspected or pumped within the last few years, you are going to want to have that happen during your due diligence period or ensuring that the seller is going to do that. How often do you have to pump a septic tank? Well, you need to do that every three to five years and that usually runs around $500 or so. And it's an easy thing to do. But otherwise, as far as maintenance on a home with septic system, <laughs> there is none. As long as you properly maintain the septic system, having it routinely pumped, uh, making sure that you do your due diligence, that you're buying a home, that everything checks out, you uh, really don't have anything to worry about considering from septic to sewer. Now, of course, you use some things you can't flush down the toilet and large things of table scraps and things like that with your garbage disposal is not the best for a septic system, but largely that's the biggest difference that you are going to find. Now, another thing that you may not be used to is the threat of termites. With the Georgia heat and humidity and the abundance of trees comes the ever-loving wood-eating termite and well, we want to make sure that they are not eating the home or the wood that your home is made out of. During your due diligence period, we will want to uh, make sure that you have a termite inspection. In fact, that is something that we do for all of our clients. And it's not a bad idea to get a repair and retreat termite bond on your house. This will run you a cost of around $200 or so each year, but it is great preventative maintenance against termites 
and if they are ever found during that yearly inspection, the pest control company will treat it and they will repair the damage at no additional cost to you. Now, one thing I am glad I did actually know before I bought my house was that I love the area that it is in. If you are relocating from out of state and you haven't spent much time in the new town that you are hoping to relocate to, I would highly recommend coming in for a visit. Thankfully, we were able to rent before we purchased our house. And in fact, we had to do that because we had to sell our home from the previous place that we lived and we needed the proceeds out of that and it was taking a lot longer and granted this was seven years ago. Uh, so we ended up renting and I'm so glad that we did because we really got to know the location that we wanted to be in, that we were gonna settle down. So however, that's a luxury that maybe you may not be able to have right now or you might look at the facts and say, hey, <laughs> rent prices right now are astronomical and the challenge of finding one that fits our family is really challenging. It really makes sense to buy right now. Well, if that is you, you want to make sure that you really get a good feel for the area of where you wanna be. So come into town for a long weekend, rent an Airbnb, take a couple of trips here, really make sure that you are landing on a really great place uh, that you wanna settle down. I can't tell you how many times we have had clients come into town who have said like, this is the town that we wanna be, and yet they spend some time here, they drive around, we introduce them to a couple of other areas that they can consider, or they spend the weekend here and they then they realize like, yeah, this is not where we wanna be, or in fact, we actually like this area much, much better. Something that a lot of people think they will be okay with is having a longer commute. In theory, a 45 minute or an hour commute to work isn't that bad on paper until you are spending two hours a day, 10 hours a week in your car sitting in traffic. Then you start to realize maybe it's worth paying slightly more each month in your mortgage uh, to be closer to wherever you are actually working than it would be to save that money and then drive and commute all of that time. So one of the things that if you are coming here into town, you can actually do that drive, especially during the daytime when it's traffic, you can kind of experience what that's going to feel like making that morning commute, feeling what it's gonna be like in the afternoon and really knowing and not just Google mapping it and figuring out like what is that time gonna be like in the car and, and what your tolerance for that will be. Lastly, one of the biggest things I wish I knew when buying was just because you are qualified up to a certain number by a lender doesn't mean that you should be looking up to that price point. Generally, the rule of thumb is, is that you should have your mortgage be less than 25% of your gross monthly income. And by the time you add up your household bills, mortgage payment, insurance, any repairs that may pop up each month, you quickly rack up quite the bill on top of that mortgage payment that was already at the top of your budget. You don't want to make yourself house poor, so you have to consider all of these additional monthly expenses that you are going to have to pay. A great lender is not only are they gonna give you your pre-approval amount, but they're actually gonna break that down and then translate to at a pre-approval amount of 500,000, this is what your actual monthly payment would be. Here's what it is at 475, here's what it is at 450. Where do you fall in that range? Where do you feel comfortable? So also keep in mind that all the other money that you spend in a month on groceries and shopping and health bills and all that kind of thing, like all of that adds up to a lot. And so you really wanna make sure that once you find that perfect house that's in your price range, you have full confidence in knowing that, yes, this is the house, I'm comfortable with this payment, I feel great moving forward with this contract. Now, of course, if you work with one of our awesome preferred lenders, they are gonna make sure that you are all set up for success and they're gonna go through that process with you to make sure that you are comfortable with all of the payments um, and make sure that you are comfortable with that budget. So there you have the things that I wish that I would have known or taken into consideration before I bought my Georgia home. Of course, if you're thinking about purchasing a home in Georgia, make sure you check out this video where we tell you all about what it's like buying a home here and what you need to know before moving to our great state.